Wow. I had prepared a lengthy introduction, but after this amazing video, no introduction is needed. Thank That's you, Emilio. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for, you know, welcome to Miami. We're so excited that you're here. You know, they're doing this thing. It's great for Miami and for the world. I mean, we need more unity. Definitely we need more unity. And, you know, that's the thing we're celebrating. And Miami is just a city that we love because, you know, we come from all over the world. And we all get along. And I think Miami is a, it's a role model to a lot of cities and a lot of global. And I'm so happy that, that you guys are here. So welcome to Miami. And to a great extent, because of you, uh, Emilio doesn't do a lot of these interviews, so we're so grateful that you're here, that you have taken the time to be with us. And you have a big production coming up today, right? Your daughter is performing in well, a sold-out concert. That's a big one, but it's my daughter. I have to be there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gloria, oh, wow. Gloria will kill me otherwise. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's good to see that my daughter is, is in the business. And, and now my grandson, which is 11 years old, and he said, you know, he was born in Venezuela. Venezuela, I mean, no, he, I mean, his mother was born in Venezuela. He was born in Miami. And it's great that, you know, his grand grandfather was in the Scala in Milano. They're from Italy. So it's nice, you know, that he speaks like different languages. And he, you know, he asked me today, Abueluto, when are you going to learn English? I'm trying, man, I'm trying really hard to learn English. <laughs> <laughs> um, people have asked you all sorts of questions. So I don't know how many new questions I'm going to get to ask. But I do want to begin asking you about you the man, the son, the husband, the father. I heard a story about you uh, playing the guitar and the accordion in front of a church to make money, right? When you came to the United States from Cuba, you came with practically nothing, and you're now one of the most successful producers in the world. Tell us a little bit about that story coming from Cuba, uh, uh, you know, being very poor uh, in your early days here in the United States and uh, rising up to who you are now. Well, it's a long story. I mean, that probably, I don't know, you see on, you see on your feed, our play was in Broadway, and now we're making a movie, it's going to be in Sony Pictures. I think my story is very much like a lot of people that realize uh, what people look for freedom, what, what we have to do. I was 11 years old when they, they came to my house looking for dollars in Cuba, and they pushed my mom and my dad and said, I can't wait, I want to live in a country like that, and, and I punished my family because after you are 15 in Cuba, you have to stay another 15 years to serve the military. So I decided to, you know, I told my mom the next day, I want to go, I want to leave. I said, the only way to leave is maybe to Spain because my mom was from Spain. And I said, I got to go. And I said, and she told me, maybe we don't get, we don't get to see each other ever again. But I said, I, I want to think about you more than anything else that you have. A, a. So in eight hours, I became a kid to become a man. And when we got there, we was homeless, me and my dad. And I used to play Saturday and Sunday. Used to, like, we got to go to a church to ask for food, like a lot of immigrants that do that. And Saturday and Sunday, I used to go see a, a, a restaurant that they play the accordion. And I used to go there and say, let me play the accordion. And they, they, they give me the food for me and my dad, and they give me, I, I get some tips. So, you know, the reason that I always say sometimes when they ask me, I tell the story because, you know, people think that you get success overnight. And I love how difficult it was for us to bring a new sound and a, a new uh, uh, way to, to bring Latinos and to bring a multi-ethnic. And, you know, it was a lot of it. This will never work. But I think in the long run, for me and Gloria, what is important is to leave a legacy of, of important about, you know, that we live in the best country in the whole world. We're free. And we appreciate that because the people take it for granted. I mean, I, thank you so much. But, you know, I remember when I did Conga, I used to go to, uh, to Sony. Only I, I got money to go in and out one day, no hotel or anything. And the guy told me, listen, they are busy. There's no way they're going to see you. This is going to happen. I said, man, I just came from, I just took a day vacation. You know, I used to work in Bacardi because I grew up with the Bacardi family that, that I love them. And seven times. And finally, when I got upstairs, he said, listen, you crazy. Conga will never work. I mean, piano, tumbao, trumpets, I mean, congas, I mean, and, uh, and the, by the way, one thing you have to change your last thing. He said, sir, I'm not going to change anything. And he told me, Right there, he told me, if you don't like that, go back to your country. And I told him, sir, I think that's a, you're crossing a line to something that is, it's, it's not mean, I mean, I don't going to let anybody change my life because one person will do it. I said, you know, don't worry about it. And they said, we don't want to put any money behind. So me and Gloria, I say, and believe it or not, this is what Americans are going to look like many years from now. Seven years later, Conga became, no, well, Conga became a huge hit global because, you know, we went to all the DJs and people are so, especially in Miami, people help us so much and they played in all the clubs. Four weeks later, number one in London, number one in Paris, number one in Holland, and it was an incredible day. So says Conga. Now, seven years later, I became president of Sony. So I used to tell the guy in the front, you remember me? 
<laughs> <laughs> so he said, I remember, sorry, it wasn't me. So that's okay, that's okay, you know. And then, you know, something, I, what I like, I was talking to Carlos. One of the things that I love about Gloria and Dan Mia is that when we became successful, our studio became an embassy. You know, we, I, I was the one responsible to, you know, sign Shakira and to do the crossover. And I signed Jennifer Lopez. I worked with Mark Anthony crossover, John Secara. I mean, Ricky Martin. We created the Latin Grammys. And now the Latin Grammys double the ratings of the American Grammy, and now it's going to be in Sevilla. So, you know, imagine the... So, I, you know, when COVID came to... to I, 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 I told Gloria, Gloria, something happened to me, I want to tell you something. I'm the happiest person in the whole world, and the more appreciated thing. I have a beautiful family, I have my kids, my grandson, and, you know, something more than anything else, people take for granted freedom. We live, like I said before, to live in freedom, especially everything that we see now, we're losing a lot of the unity. And I, think, I hope our career and our message will be, you know, and I think Miami is, is a city that represents, I was having dinner with the president yesterday, and, you know, we talk about a lot of them I know for many years because I've been in the content. They give me the, the medal, you know, like a medal of freedom. And the president by Prasano, that some of the things, it was beautiful to see them and, you know, to see that they feel proud about the contribution Latinos and, and, and the opportunity we have to showcase now the diversity about that we come from different countries, that we have different culture. But in Miami, is a place that everybody gets along, and I love that. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. You mentioned, you mentioned Conga, and there's no question that Conga put Miami on the musical map. And there's also no question that you, more than anybody in the world, has helped to make Miami a center of Latin American culture, music, art, entertainment. What's next? Uh, where do we go next as this hub of, of tremendous, uh, vibrant culture that really has become the capital of Latin America? Well, like you see in the EPK, I mean, I produce like, you know, three Super Bowls halftime, the, the three Olympics. I, I produce 40 events in the White House. I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican. And somebody who has no interest in politics, my interest is to talk to every president about the future, what a contribution we do, and how lucky we are to live here. But more than anything else, I mean, right now, I'm working now with the Vatican. I do all the, uh, for the foundation. I was with the Pope there three weeks ago, and uh, I wrote a, a song, which I, I did it with the, uh, the Whalers, Bob Marley's band. It's a reggae, and I, I said, I hope he likes it. And he loved the song, I said, wow, I'm so happy. <laughs> and uh, so, I'm working now the, doing the, like the 11 albums. Like I speak, we're really busy with albums now. We're working all the way with the Christian Donald. I mean, with, with, I work at some for Bocelli. I just did a song for the, for the Vatican that, that, that is a, but I'm doing, I'm doing like the Alejandro Fernandez, the song. So I'm doing a diversity of music and uh, I love that. And we have a company that I mean, is a EE Global, and what we do, we do a lot of the promotion and things. So instead of going to the traditional way, in the, in the radio and television, we go on internet. And I don't know if you've never seen Only in Day. I don't know if you saw that. I go on that. So we're creating, I'm so happy because, you know, in Only in Day, we make people laugh and we make people cry. And that makes me so happy. And you only saw, see half of the thing that we get. I wish I could have a different channel to show it because we get a lot of crazy things, I can tell you that. And now we're going to get our companies moving out beside, you know, restaurants and hotels and probably you've been in some of our places like Bongos and Stefan Kitchen and, and the Cardoso Hotel and Vero Beach. We, we have a hotel in Costa Deste. We are getting now into video games. A lot of the video games, the future now to communicate with the young demographic to, to showcase in the video games. So we're doing a lot of new things, especially, you know, a lot of things involved with technology. That's one thing. And music, always going to be music and movies. I, I don't a lot of movies like you, so you see. And uh, it's fun. And now, we, like I said, we are producing now the with Sony Pictures on your feet. So it's going to be a story about uh, me and Gloria. I think representing a lot of the people that went through the same situation that we've been, and they're going to identify with that. So I hope people uh, realize uh, how, how lucky we are. Uh, and, and you know, even people told me, you have to leave to, uh, I mean, to uh, London, you have to leave to New York. I'm never going to leave Miami. Miami is a place that opened the arm for us, and we appreciate that from everybody that helped us so much. Absolutely. You are a remarkable man in so many ways, but one of the most remarkable things about you, in my opinion, is the way you help fellow Latinos make it to the big leagues. Uh, how, you, how do you identify talent? How do you say this is going to be the next one? And, and, and how do you go about grooming the next big star in Latin music? You know why? Because I didn't judge where they come from. I just said, if they are good, if they are good musicians, they are bring good music. And, peop and people in the world need to be like, a, I remember John Secara, when I saw him, they asked him a question about, you know, the races, and they said, you know, Emilio's Colbert, Brian. 
easy people like it is. I think we need to, we live in such a difficult time. So every time you watch the news, I was awake at four o'clock in the morning today. And I'm thinking, and then I put on the news and I say, oh my God, it's, it's a, I wish the people learned that to have better communication to avoid so many problems in the world now. And what I did, it was so difficult for me and Gloria, that when we opened the studio, you get Carlos Viver running, or you get Shakira, or you get the Julio Iglesias, you get oh my guy, it's still, it's like an embassy of, you know, multi-ethnic. Now I'm doing the Whalers, second album for the Whalers, the band from, by, I mean, a Cuban guy writing reggae, it's really difficult, but I didn't. So, you know, I got nominated last time, I mean, that was my 43 nomination for Grammy, so I was happy. I didn't get the Grammy, but at least I got nominated. <laughs> We've gotten many Grammys, right? 20... Yeah. 21. 21. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how many nominations? 40... 43. 43, and counting. Uh, you mentioned Gloria in the video. We saw Gloria uh, many, many times. It's difficult to tell the story of Emilio without Gloria and the story of Gloria without Emilio. How did you meet? We met, I mean, I used to play with the Bacardi family. I used to go with accordion. I used to go to their house for tips and they, they I mean... They became my, my family when I was my mom, and I love them because, you know, I worked for Bacardi almost 13 years. But, you know, every weekend, I used to go with the choreo and play like Sabor Ami and Sibonet, and I saw people crying. I said, I said, why are they crying? It was about the feeling about Cuban music, a little kid that came from Cuba playing all these Latino things from the special Cuban music, and they got so emotional about it, and it was great, and they used to tip me. I fed me. You said, come, you're part of the family. So, you know, I used to have two drinks, three drinks, and, you know, eat. And it was fun for me. It was the only time that I felt happy. I was going to such a rough time with my, without my mom and, you know, my brother and, and Lily now, the, La Placa, the one that's on TV now, very famous now. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, even when my mom came, my brother stayed in Cuba. And, you know, I decided to go in a boat to get my mom, my Lily and my brother and, the, and her brother. And I got lost, in the, lost for seven days in the, in, in, in the sea looking for that. You know, when I got to Cuba after seven days, I mean, uh, I couldn't get them out. So they had to come to Costa Rica because I, I made the president. So, you know, I think a lot of the story people identify, especially in Miami, because we see, I mean, we know the real story. With real story, that communism doesn't work. It doesn't matter what anybody tells them. They're lying to people and, you know, I'm saying, uh, even you tell that, they are a great way that they influence people to believe that it's a more beautiful thing. Communism doesn't bring nothing good to anybody in the world. At the beginning of the interview, I mentioned that there's nobody who has done more to promote Latin culture uh, in Miami than you. Uh, you could have lived anywhere in the world, right? Uh, you live in Miami. What does Miami mean to you? Miami believes dreams, opportunity, and home, believe it or not. I mean, we need to feel that this is home because, you know, we grew up here. We never forget where we came from. We didn't change, we didn't change our last name. I didn't take the congas out and the tumbaos. So the beautiful thing is that people reacted to a new sound, a new way, it's a Spanish name. Well, it's a Spanish because my dad was Lebanese. So my mom was from Spain, but I was Lebanese. I was born in Cuba, grew up in Spain and Miami. So I tell people that I'm very confused because I don't know where to go now. Because, you know, even when they, they cook food at home, they have a little bit of Lebanese, Spanish, rice and beans. So it's, it's you know, but it's fun. Listen, it's good to have many different cultures. It's open your mind to a lot of, a lot of beautiful things. Absolutely. Um, you talked about uh, the struggle for freedom and how you left Cuba. Today is Victims of Communism Day. And nowadays it seems that at universities all over the United States and, and in different parts of the world, you say communism and, you know, it's exotic, it's romantic. And you talk about democracy and, and capitalism and it's almost like a bad word. What do you tell those leaders? You meet with presidents and leaders on a regular basis. What do you tell those leaders who, who, who are thinking that, you know, Maybe communism is not so bad. Uh, uh, why not deal with Cuba? Why not deal with Venezuela? Why not deal with these dictatorships? You're not a politician, but you have a strong voice in support of freedom and democracy. What do you tell those people who, who, who really think communism is, is not that bad? Well, number one, it's a shame we have a day for that because, you know, they should be ashamed of what they've done into the world. I mean, they promise a lot of things to poor people. I mean, I always said that uh, if you have a rich friend, you have opportunity to go and look something up to him. What are you going to look up to a, a communist? Somebody who is a dictator, who's bad in home post? I mean, when the president of the United States called me, I was in the Oval Office and he told Emilio, I want you to produce this summer of America. I said, Mr. President, it's only 24 days uh, to go. I said, you can do it. You don't 40 events in the White House. I said, yes, yeah, I, I understand, but uh, it's difficult. You're going to have 37 presidents in Los Angeles and uh, it's really difficult because of security. But I said, I don't want to cross the line. 
But uh, the only thing I can tell you, I hope you, with all respect, if it's a person who's going to be somebody who's not the president of Cuba, a dictator, he's ruling in that country, I'll not be able to do that. And he told me, go to Oval Office, let me talk to you. And this is the first time that I say that, because I, I don't like to say, do, say things that I do. And then I, was, I went to Oval Office, I was by myself. I was taking pictures. I said, oh my God, nobody's going to believe I'm here in Oval Office <laughs> by myself. <laughs> I had connection because I produced 40 events. So the two two uh, uh, waiters came and brought me Cuban coffee. I said, wow, that's all I need now. <laughs> and then he came in and said, listen, Emilio, we don't want to invite Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. And I think that was a great thing that to accomplish. You've been nominated uh, for a Latin Grammy for producing Patria y Vida, a song that has really become uh, a national anthem for Cuba. A lot of the music that you produce really touches on those themes. How can we use art, culture, music, entertainment to bring about those positive changes? Well, I didn't do the song. I work on the, the video. The video was important. I want to tell you, Dan, you could, I don't know if you got to see it, but you know, it showcased the, the suffering of the, of the people. And uh, it showcased when I got into a whole discussion with President Obama, he was going to Cuba, he invited me to go. I said, sir, I cannot go to Cuba, absolutely. I will never go to Cuba as long as Cuba is under dictatorship. But one thing that I asked, uh, yeah. I asked the president, I said, the only thing we need, we need to work on the internet, sir. We need to have the internet. So he said, well, you can stay with me for a couple of minutes, Emilio. So he came back, I talked to him, I explained to him, and you know, one of the things that, I, I was not happy that he went to Cuba because he lied to him and I told that to him. People think that I go on to support him. No, I tell him like it is, that, like I, the way that I think. And, uh, I think when he came from Cuba, he realized that he was disappointed because I told them, they're not going to wait for you, they're not going to welcome you, these people lie. And he told me, it's not what I expected. And, uh, and one thing that I remember he called, he called me from the Oval Office and said, Emilio, we got the internet. Internet was an important people to know what happened in Cuba. And that was probably because I put a lot of pressure on him because he said, that's the only thing that probably will be important you to get out of Cuba when you took the visit. But I think in the long, long run, you can never negotiate with communist people because you know they have only one way to destroy the world, absolutely. Uh, I mentioned how, how you've been asked probably every possible question uh, in the planet. Is there one question that you wish, in an interview, that you wish you would have been asked, that you have never been asked? And if so, what is that question so I can ask it? Well, I get a lot of weird things, but you know, you know they ask me, how do you been married 45 years? What's the secret? I say, I say yes to my wife, yes, baby, yes, baby, do whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> That's a real secret. <laughs> I, I mentioned in my book, I say, women are, are more intelligent than men. I believe women are a lot of, smarter than men. But besides, I'm going to tell you something. I think we have a beautiful marriage. And me and Gloria, Gloria, the father went to Bay of Peaks. And they went to Vietnam where he came, he came in a wheelchair. I saw in their, in their life how difficult it was for them and her mom. And I was so proud of her mom, how she fought you know, to teach the, the girls. And I'm so blessed that I'm married to Gloria because she's an incredible woman. She's a great mother. She's a great Latina. And she's a great American, which you, I love that. Amazing. I asked you what's next for Miami in terms of music and entertainment. What's next for you? What exciting projects are you looking forward to completing in the next couple of years? Well, I'm doing now a lot of things. I mean, definitely I'm going into in technology. I think it's going to be important. And uh, I'm at Rossi for the Alice Island. I work in the museum now. I'm building the new museum in Alice Island. I'm working now the... I, we just opened the, uh, the University of Miami, the, you know, the new theater and the uh, music. We're doing so many things, new movies. I mean, working in the Gloria's writing now with my daughter. It's a new, uh, the symphony. But we just talked to the president of Paraguay. And that was, I mean, Gloria's writing a new thing. The, it's, it's one symphony that became one of the most famous. It's all kids and they didn't have money. And they build all the instrument with the, for the garbage, from the garbage. So, and now they're becoming like a global the influence. That's, that's it. It's going to be great. Gloria and Emily is doing the, all the music. It's going to be conducted by the guy who conducted Hamilton and Broadway. So that's one thing that Gloria is doing with Emily. Gloria is hosting now the Kennedy Center Honors. And I'm producing the, the Christmas song for the Vatican, which is uh, for the first time. I'm going to have six different symphonies, over 700 musicians performing global. It, you know, on the same time for unity on the world, it's going to be a song that, that is going to be, believe it or not, reggae, like I told you. But it has a, a great message about lo, 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 love always wins. And I think that's, a, that's what the pop like it. And you know, I was very happy that he liked it. And he said that it was nice to, to bring like a new demographic, you know, to, uh, to you know, bring hope to the world. Tell us something we don't know about you. Me? 
Then I wake up the, the happiest person my whole life. And the first thing I do, believe it or not, I feed animals. That's my, you know, I go in my bike. I have like 400 birds waiting for me, iguanas, and I have the squirrels. <laughs> Gloria thinks that I'm crazy, but I say, that makes me happy. I think anybody work up in the morning and do something good for somebody else, you start the day and the right thing, things go big. I believe a lot in karma. I believe a lot of the things, different religions and everything. But I believe, you know, my dad won the lottery 27 times. And he died with one pair of shoes and one suit. He gave all the money away to poor people. And, you know, I think giving is a beautiful thing and we need to learn about giving instead of receiving. I'm so blessed that, you know, playing the accordion, sometimes going home without food, and then I've done so many beautiful things. I have to be the happiest man in the world because, you know, I brought my kids in a free country, my grandson, and, you know, something looking forward. Uh, the day that I'm here to live a great city, the, the, I mean, a great uh, history about sacrifice and somebody who who's simple. I think, you know, sometimes we forget to say thanks. And, you know, I think that's important to say that every single day. You wake up the happiest man in the world. What keeps you up at night? What, what concerns you? Health. I, you know, when we went through a lot in our life, I mean, I mean, I don't know, probably you remember, you don't remember Gloria became paralyzed with an accident. And then one minute changed our life. I mean, Gloria was a six month, you know, that, that I have to move and move her and, you know, sometimes bathe and brush her teeth. And I remember the first day that she dressed by herself, she was, she was so happy. And I said, people take for granted even to drink a glass of water or to dress by yourself. That changed a lot of my life and even more because uh, you, your life can change in one minute. And realistic, uh, money cannot buy your health. And you know, money cannot buy your love. I mean, Celia Cruz told me one day, we can sell records, love you cannot buy, that people gonna come to you and give you a kiss. And you know, she was so right about it. I got the honor to produce her and write a lot of the music. I wrote the music, Por si acaso no regreso. The song that became a big hit. And uh, I remember my biggest dream was, uh, even I produced Shakira and Jennifer to produce Celia. So she called me one day, I said, Emilio, you told me you have a song for me. Yes, I was taking a shower, by the way. So I said, okay, see me a little bit. I'm going to Miami tomorrow. It was a lie, I didn't write nothing for her. I wrote it right there. So I say, I have this song, the song goes, like, yo le pongo sazón, sazón, le pongo sazón, yo le pongo sazón, a mi negrito le pongo sazón. Oh, I love that. See, keep singing. No, tomorrow when you come. Gloria, let's finish the song. Sally's coming tomorrow. <laughs> but you know something? She, she's a perfect example about the, uh, I mean, the real queen. Somebody who was so talented and, uh, and so humble and so nice. And she, she reunited different countries. I mean, they felt that belonged, you know, I just saw somebody from France now that can pick me up. She was listening to Celia Cruz. And you know, and life is living a legacy. Listen, a legacy, I mean, when you become successful, have, people have opinion about you and things, and even without, you know, especially on social media. But we've been so happy because, you know, we, people know, we grew up in Miami. Everybody in Miami knows. Or they know my, my cousin or my brother or my, my or Lily. Or, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to have that. And speaking of humility, you've been incredibly humble and generous with your time. Emilio arrived about an hour, hour early, and the way he, he took every question, met with every person uh, that wanted to spend a few minutes with him has been incredible. So thank you. Thank you oh, for you that buddy. generosity. I want to conclude the interview the way I began it, uh, uh, talking about you and what you represent. I don't think there's anybody who represents the American dream more than you do. Uh, the world right now is a complete mess. We have a war in Ukraine, we have a war in the Middle East, uh, people fighting with one another. Here in the US, there's a lot of division, a lot of problems. And many people believe that the American dream doesn't exist anymore. You personify the American dream. What do you tell the young student, we have many young people here in this room, what do you tell that young student who believes that the American dream doesn't exist anymore, that it's not for her, that it's not for him? What's your message to them? Well, the American dream definitely you realize every day, you know, especially now with the, I want to tell you, even with Latinos in the state, the opportunity we get now, second generation to be running the huge corporation, it's an amazing thing to have. And uh, the only thing that I tell, tell kids when I talk to, sometimes I do to university, don't let one person like Fidel Castro did to a lot of the Cuban people and to many people change your life. Because realistically, when they tell you things will not happen, you have to prove the world that, you know, the American dream is still doing it. The way to do it, I mean, I call Latitude Convention, and we, what we do every single year is to showcase all the contributions that we do into the United States and how lucky we are. And uh, it's a, uh, because one person can bring a lot of hate. But I think if we, like I said, love always wins. We need to be sure that we fight for the love 
And uh, I think that's my message that I have to, especially with young teenagers, I have, you know, they, they can have a communication and they can write and they can do a lot of things. Before I go, what I should do, I don't know if you mind, I don't know if anybody wants to ask me a question because sometimes I when I go out, I, should, I wanted to ask you that. Did anybody want to ask me a question? That would be incredible. So, yes, shout it out. If you would go back in time, so when he was in college, what advice would you give yourself? Be you. Don't let anybody tell you who, who you are. Be you and be proud. Be proud where you came, where you came from, where, wherever you came from, and be proud to live in America. That's the only thing I can tell you. Be proud to live in America. What a great message and how true. All right, let's take a few more if you have time. This is an amazing opportunity, so let's take advantage of it. Now they, they're going to ask me the lottery, or the numbers of the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. That's good, you did a good There we go, yes. What is your favorite song and why? What is your favorite song and why? Oh my God. That's a um, tough one. I mean, probably I'm going to say that that's difficult because I work and I write for so many people my whole life. You know, I'm the songwriter Hall of Fame. So I write to a lot of, for a lot of people. But two songs that I love. One of them is Coming Out of the Dark, After the Accident, because that was a way to say thank you to people. That, that was it. We wrote that in five minutes. And the other one that I wrote, you know, we finished the Mi Tierra album, and, you know, I said, Gloria, we need to write a ballad. And I co-wrote, I started writing Los Años Que Me Quedan Por Vivir. Beautiful. Yeah, that became number one almost one year on the charts. And it's about, you know, whatever is left, left in your life, enjoy it. Don't lose time in anything negative. Go for positive. Go to try to make somebody else happy. And you're going to be a lot happier than. And that, the song is about that. It's about you know the years to, that you have to live. Try to enjoy and you know enjoy the the love, which is important. That's actually one of my favorite songs. Yeah, that, that. You see, that's good. Anyway, <laughs> yes, right here. What's your hope for how things get resolved in the Middle East? Easy I, I think I want to tell you simple. I think the, it's very difficult because, you know, something, the hate doesn't bring the hate, it doesn't work. I think, you know, something, they need to get on the table and work and talk before they do, you know, sometimes it's difficult. But I think communication, having a, a conversation definitely will help, you know, get a lot of things done before we go to work. I hope, you know, we, we're trying to go to the moon, to, to Mart, and to go to many other things, and we still have a lot of problems here. So I think communication is going to be very important. I hope the future of the politicians, they communicate with people more and instead of, you know, the, instead of having dictators as, as like a communist country, all, the, all this kind of situation they go on, that is very difficult. I hope, you know, I pray every night, me and Gloria, for peace, and, and only there, everywhere in the world, because, you know, a lot of people suffering now, and that, that, I'm not happy about that. Right here. Go a little louder. Uh, good afternoon. If you wouldn't live in Miami, where would you live? In, Next. A free, in a free Cuba. I would love that. Never to the left. Cuba. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We have time for one more question. Yes. What inspires you? How do you find inspiration to be as creative as you are? Listen, being alive in the morning and I start the day doing something good, that inspired me to you know, to avoid my kids to go what I went through. I always say, you know, sometimes uh, you do an investment and you think that, and you say, well, I do this because, you know, uh, it's good. And Gloria say, why? I say, I don't want my kids to maybe be playing the accordion for tips. I want to get them educated. I still believe in you know, I came when I was 14 years old. I never learned English perfect or Spanish, but I talk to everybody, it doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, I, I mean, one funny story, I was talking to President, the, I was producing something for President the, the Bush in the White House. And they told me, listen, don't let him ask for an encore because the President of Mexico is here and everything is blocked from here to the airport. So I'm, I'm next to him, and when he was ready to go to one more, I said, Mr. President, they said, Emilio, I don't, I don't talk Spanish. 
I'm talking to you in English. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I get that. But you know something? Be happy, man. Enjoy the whenever you can eat. Enjoy when you can give something to somebody else. Because that always going to come back to you. Promise, I saw that with my dad. And that was a great, great uh, legacy that my dad left me. And, you know, so I'm very happy about that. Emilio, earlier today, I asked you a question. And you gave me a beautiful answer. And I want the audience to hear. I, I said, uh, you have won every possible award under the heavens. Which one are you most proud of? The most proud is my family. My best production there is my family. It's beautiful. Yes, sir. Thank you. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time, for your generosity, for your humility, and for all you do. Thank you. This is incredible. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate this incredible day. Mr. President. <laughs>